Judy Embridge is firmly standing behind its policy, saying it's following the right procedures set forth by the EPA when it comes to cleanup. The company says some oil will be left behind right now because removing it could cause more damage. The company says some oil will be left behind right now because removing it could cause more damage. My name is Ben Gotchel. I live in Lincoln, Nebraska right now. I grew up on a ranch in Holt County, Nebraska in the Sand Hills. And the Keystone XL pipeline is going to come through the Sand Hills. And so I came here to Michigan to see what a tar sands oil spill would look like. And what I found out is that it's far worse than I could have imagined. Um, what we have here is lies. The extent of the damage here is far worse than Enbridge said it was, and the extent of the cleanup is far, in it, far more inadequate than they could could ever even explain. Uh, what we have here is a cover-up of intense magnitude. This is a crime. This is a crime against nature. It's a crime against humanity, and we do not want something like this going through the Sand Hills, Nebraska. <clears throat> no amount of oil is worth it. We can't risk our land and water for this. We can't do that. And I'm going to do everything I can to stop that from happening. My Thank name you. is Adrian Van Bellen. I live in East Texas, where the Keystone XL pipeline is proposed to be constructed. It would cross six river channels and many bogs, sloughs, and bayous, wetlands similar to what I've witnessed here in Marshall, Michigan. I somewhat imagined what it might be like if we had a a spill in East Texas, but the magnitude of what I've seen here is beyond imagination. I, 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 I'm just stunned by what you've shown us, John. The cover-up is beyond reality. How they can consciously do this is beyond imagination. It's unconscionable. To Washington, we well, President Obama says we need to push him. We're going to push him, and if we have every chance, any chance we have. We will talk to the press about what we've seen here. John, you're doing a wonderful job. Keep it up. God bless you. Keep, don't give up. I don't like Embridge. Why don't you like Embridge? Because they just keep ruining other people's lives. And what was your some of your symptoms that you had after um, the oil spill? I had uh, three seizures at the other house and two seizures where I live now. Um, what, what was the, the fumes like? They were very strong. Um, they give you like a funny taste in your throat. Um, it makes your throat kind of sore if did, you're breathing it in a lot. Did you get sick from it? Yes, I got migraines. I had a seizure for the first time in my life. You had a seizure after the oil spill the first time in your life? Yes. Um, and, uh, and then my son actually had a uh, an episode where he looked like he was having seizures, passing out. I even took him to the ER, and they just counted it as uh, dehydration. They just started digging it up, you know, and they're saying it's not dangerous. Why are we still getting sick? And they won't give me answers. Oh, it's clean, it's safe, it's this, it's that. Live here then. Tell me it's clean and it's safe. Live here and eat the eat the, what comes out of that river. Swim in that river and tell me it's safe. Yeah, I hear you. I I know what you mean. I've been talking to a lot of people that are going through the same thing. And then Embridge tells me I live too far away from the river to be affected by it. And I can throw a rock in the river. That's how close I live. I'm touched. I come up with, every day. I come up with little pimples on my arms. They break out. I never had that. Never. Have you seen the doctor now? Yeah. He says she's not going to make it to her 50th birthday because of this oil spill from the chemicals. That's what he told her. Excuse me, sir. What's your name? I'm Richard. My name's John Bolenball, and I'm her friend. Yeah. It's affected me more than you would see it. And your company says it's not harmful. But yet. Like, I'm not going to make it to my 50th birthday. I'm 49 years old. You like your life shortened that much? Can you turn on the air conditioner? It's on the wall. In the hallway. Push the right button to the left. It's okay, babe. I got you. It's 
okay. It's almost over. It's almost over. It's almost over. It's almost over. It's okay. It's okay. It's almost over. This is why we have to stop Embridge and these oil companies from doing this. They're having seizures and they're, they're getting sick from this tar sand oil. Please help us. on the other side with the press too. They just didn't show the footage of that. All that side, I'll fall right in over there. Um, down over, over there I'll fall in. All they do is they put grass and, and put this canvas over the top of this little area. They didn't dig the, I'm telling you, they didn't dig this place up. Tonight, our I-team takes on accusations of an Embridge cover-up. Last July, a pipeline owned by Embridge ruptured in Marshall, sending hundreds of thousands of gallons of oil into West Michigan's waterways. Now a former Enbridge employee is blowing the whistle on the company, accusing it of covering up oil. Tonight, he takes us to some of those areas he claims are still soaking in the mess. News Channel 3's Aaron Baskerville takes the whistleblower's concerns to Enbridge, and he's live now in the studio with this cleanup controversy. Aaron. Judy Enbridge is firmly standing behind its policy, saying it's following the right procedures set forth by the EPA when it comes to cleanup. The company says some oil will be left behind right now because removing it could cause more damage. The company says some oil will be left behind right now because removing it could cause more damage. But one former worker is doing everything possible to get his story out there. The creek's right over here. A former worker blowing the whistle on Enbridge takes News Channel 3 on a tour of sites he claims still have oil, but the company is not coming back to clean up. John Bolenball still finds ice packed with oil and is making strong accusations against the company. They were trying to meet deadlines, so what they would tell us to do is take dirt, put it over the top of the oil. They were telling us to take mud with uh, oil and throw it into the woods. 
They're telling us to rake dirt over the top of oil. And he says because he wouldn't do those things, he was fired in October after two months on cleanup operations. But Bolenbaugh believes the so-called smoking gun is near Tomage Creek in Ground Zero in Marshall. I just wanted to prove that this is, ugh, ugh, this is all oil. It is all oil. This is not mud. Mud will freeze. But they put this canvas over the top of it. This is just plain old canvas. They put grass seed underneath it, and it, what's supposed to happen is the grass will grow through. He's accusing Enbridge of using a coconut matting to cover up obvious oil, with the company having no thoughts of ever cleaning these areas up. The project director was scheduled to go out to the site with us, but said a significant issue came up, so we showed him our video. No, that is not oil. That, that's sediment. Now, whether or not that sediment is, is, is contaminated, I, I can't tell from, from the video, but he, uh, the video, the, the individual is not needing even oil. Yeah. It's obvious that this was taken in, in a wetland area uh, where the sediment is saturated with, with, with water. It, it's mud. This is all oil. Okay? Can you see how deep I am? My whole leg is buried. It's not easy to get out, but this grass is covering it up for you. All right? I'm just telling you, it's here. It's going to get in your wells. This is the truth. These companies are evil. It's October 9th. I just showed you the coordinates. We're at Talmadge Creek, and I'm going to just show you that they put sand over the top of the oil. Can you see how clear it is? You can see right down to the bottom. looks really clear. I'm going to take some sand, I'm going to show you real close up, this is sand, alright, see there's no sheen, the reason why that's important is because when I dig down, the oil is underneath the sand, See it coming up? It's under the sand. It's yeah. not in the sand. It's under the sand that they put there in massive amounts. Wow. That's disgusting. All right. Look at how much oil that they buried. Look at how much they're digging out. Because of my complaints, this area right here is the area I showed. Look at how much they're digging out. They buried all this oil, and now because of my videos, they're reasons for his lawsuit prove he was telling the truth. The I team has examined those deposition transcripts. For example, this testimony on page 39 was from a man Bolenbaugh says was his former boss on the cleanup. Do you recall being present at a meeting in which John Duncan told SET employees that they didn't have to cover up oil if it bothered their conscience? Yes. And when did that take place? after an O'Brien representative told us to spread oily debris in the woods out thinner so it would look less like there was thick oil there. And, um, you uh, um, are owner of uh, the Moonraker, or part owner? Yes. Alright, um, that's in Marshall. Um, the oil spill was on the other side of this building. And um, when did you smell the oil for the first time? Uh, it would have been the Friday before um, it was called in on that Sunday. Okay, so it was called in on Sunday, but you smelled it on Friday, which is the 20, July 23rd. July 23rd. And um, did anybody else smell it? Yeah, quite a few customers had been coming in off the golf course, which is uh, probably less than a mile away from here, or right around a mile from here, and had observed smelling the same type of smell that we had observed on our deck as well as in our parking lot. Now, didn't you have uh, the guy that actually made the 911 call on Sunday that reported this? He also smelled it on Friday? Jim, his name was Jim Blankenship. He also observed smelling it on Friday, um, I believe as well as Saturday. But I do remember that he did make the call after leaving here approximately at 9 p.m. on Sunday.